First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fox 12 Now. That is a shot. I'm probably going to be pulling up quite a bit today because that is up at Ski Bowl. Look at all the snow. Yesterday, there was hardly anything there. It is coming down over the mountains right now, so just be careful if you're out there driving. We are live here with this show. I am Greg Nibbler, as I mentioned, and we are live streaming on our social media apps. We're on our website and, of course, on our app, which you can download and watch all of our Fox 12 Now content. We cover a lot of stuff today, a lot coming up on the show, but right now we're going to talk about something that everybody should be aware of. I think QR codes are something we probably all use in some way, shape, or form. Specifically, you know, if you think about since the pandemic, so many restaurants, they use that for their uh, for their menus, you scan the QR code, you're just used to pulling that up. But of course, scammers are figuring out how to take advantage of that. And that is what we're talking about. It's a term I will admit I was unaware of until yesterday. It's called quishing. So we're going to discuss that and find out what that actually is. To do so, we've got Jeremy Fuchs, research analyst for Checkpoint Software Technologies. And Jeremy, thank you uh, for, for joining us here to talk about all of this. I think to start off, can you, uh, can you let us know about this term and I guess just some of the things that we should be concerned with when it comes to QR codes? Yeah, thanks for having me. So quishing or QR code phishing is one of the, the latest and hottest trends within the phishing world, particularly as it relates to email. And essentially what it boils down to is the QR codes that we are used to using. Uh, the ones that, as you mentioned, that we see at restaurants or you go to practically any place and scan a QR code. But a QR code is essentially a vehicle for a, a way to showcase a link. And so in these cases, the link is not going to direct you to your favorite restaurant's menu, but it's going to direct you to something malicious. Usually, it's a page that is designed to look like, say, a Microsoft login page or a Gmail login page, but it's not. And so what they're trying to do is get you to enter your username and your password. And instead of being logged into your Microsoft account or your Gmail account, they're actually going to go ahead and steal those that username and password and use it um, for something else. So something that seems sort of innocent and something that we use you know, probably in our daily lives um, has kind of been turned on its head and is now being used for uh, malicious activity. Yeah, I mean, QR codes are certainly something that uh, you see them everywhere now. And, and people have gotten so much more used to doing it, just point, pointing your camera at it, boom, pull it right up. So, um, you know, with these newer scams, how prevalent are these QR code scams that people are falling victim to? Yeah, it, it kind of took a rapid um, rise in the last few months. So between August and September, uh, our analysts saw a 587% increase in QR codes delivered via email. So that's just uh, email malicious QR codes at a 587% increase. And so far in October, we're seeing about the same amount between September and October, slightly more um, thus far in October with about a week left in the month. So this sort of kind of came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, every one of our uh, customers, uh, people who are you know interested in leveraging checkpoint services are asking, hey, how do you protect against QR code phishing or quishing? Because it's everywhere. And, you know, unfortunately, traditional solutions haven't really figured out how to stop it. QR codes are sort of a, a tricky thing because it's that weird image, right? And it's designed for machines, but yes, the code was behind it. And it, it's, a, you know, for something so simple and something so ubiquitous, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So this rapid rise, I think, caught a lot of people off guard um, and now are, you know, forcing folks and organizations to kind of scramble to ensure that they have the right protections in place. Yeah, 500 uh, percent. That's that's pretty wild. Of that uh, of that increase that people are dealing with, so what what is it really that's driving this increase in interest from you know the bad actors out there? Yeah, there's a few things. I mean, one we talked about it is the inherent trust that we all have in QR codes. I mean, if we could count the amount of times we've all scanned a QR code in the last three and a half years, you know, we could still be counting. So. When somebody receives a QR code, whether it's via an email or a text message, or they just see it out in the world, you know, we scan it and we don't think twice. Um, so what hackers have sort of come to realize, and this is something that often happens with uh, hackers, is that they find something that works and then they can exploit and they kind of, you know, put the pedal to the metal and try to, you know, go for it as long as they can and get as much out of it until protections change and user behavior changes. So I think... The, you know, the inherent trust in a QR code is one thing. And 
like I mentioned, they're more difficult to prevent than you might think. Um, it requires a lot of uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all the stuff that's been in the news for the last year. It requires a lot of heavy duty stuff and a lot of analysis to understand what's actually hiding behind that little funky image. And so a lot more of these emails are getting through to users inboxes. And when they see it, they're going to scan it and continue on because that's what we've been trained to do for the last number of years. Is this something that uh, people are seeing as far as outside of emails? Like if you're seeing it out in just, you know, in paper form somewhere, are, are people try, trying to hack into something like that? Yeah, we've seen examples of that, uh, less so than email. Obviously, it requires a little bit more subterfuge to swap out a paper QR code at a restaurant, but that is a huge possibility. And again, if you go to a restaurant, you're assuming, and you're probably not even thinking for a second that that QR code is not going to take you to that uh, company's website um, or to their menu. And so we kind of just scan it and go about our day. And it, there is an opportunity, and we have seen some of it, but not quite on the scale yet as it is an email where that can happen. And so it, it requires a bit of a mindset shift on behalf of you know everyday people that we've been so accustomed and used to scanning these codes that maybe we kind of need to take a step back and reevaluate how we use them and you know how we can ensure that we can use them safely. So what are some things and steps that people can do to make sure that they're not scanning a bad QR code? Yes, there's a few things. And one of the things I always like to emphasize is it's really important to slow down and take a second. You know, um, take a second, take a breath, and just kind of figure out the context. If you receive an email with a QR code and you're at work, if you take a second and think, do I usually receive an email with a QR code asking me to re-log in? Is that something that happens frequently? It usually doesn't, and that can be an opportunity for you to go some to ask somebody in your IT department. Um, there are other ways to sort of look when you scan a QR code. You, the little link comes up about where it's going to go. It's always a good idea to check that. If it's not going to where you think it's supposed to go, if it's not going to that restaurant's website, or it's not going to gmail.com, but instead a bunch of letters or numbers, probably a good idea to not click on it. But again, I think it's really important that whenever we're operating, particularly in the cybersecurity realm, to take a second, to take a beat and understand, okay, is this expected? Does this make sense? Is this logical? And if it isn't, there's usually a good chance there might be something awry and it's a good chance to not uh, continue to interact or engage with it. So it really is one of those things, just take that second, don't just click through immediately on everything, actually take a look at what you're what you're clicking on which seems like common sense but that's kind of hard to do sometimes when you're you it, know, it's hard to do and you know we're all balancing or multitasking it and we're working or we really want that coffee and want to check out the qr code but it only takes literally a second or two it's not about sitting down for 20 minutes and analyzing it it's just taking a breath taking a pause just thinking about it for a second or two and you know usually common sense prevails in these attacks and that's something that we just need to exercise a little bit more of well, Jeremy, I appreciate you filling us in on the details on this so that we can understand a little bit more about what it is that's going on out there. The, the new term, quishing, which uh, it's going to take me a little while to get used to that, but that's uh, obviously with a 500% increase, this is uh, something that we all need to be aware of and think about. And that goes, I would imagine, for anybody who's maybe the more vulnerable, uh, maybe perhaps more vulnerable to some of these uh, scamming uh, things that are going on out there, but also those of us who maybe think that we're pretty savvy but are just clicking through and falling victim to it too. They're, they're good. Uh, for, for everyone out there, can you uh, give everybody a little bit more information too about where they can go to find out more, more about these kinds of things and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to uh, www.checkpoint.com. We'll have some great information about QR codes and all things cybersecurity and some good tips and tricks to help you stay safe both at home and in the workplace. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much for joining us today here on Fox 12 Now. Really appreciate the information. Thank you. All right, and for everybody watching again, we, this is Fox 12 Now, so, so great info right there. And this is something I also encourage for those of you who follow along with these segments. We've done quite a few on, on technical security and you know some of it's common sense, some of it's not, but there's also people out there probably in your life who could use a little bit of help or a little advice on that, uh, who maybe click through on things or think an email is real. There's some great segments that we have here for Fox 12 Now that you can go back and take a look at. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel or just download the app, the Fox, Fox 12 Oregon app. Click on the Fox 12 Now button or the website under news, Fox 12 Now. So plenty of places to find it, to find those videos, and then you can share those and let other people know about these things like, like this, like QR codes. 500% increase, that's, that's no joke. That means a lot of people are falling victim to these. Okay, so we have a lot here happening on the show today. As I mentioned before, we're live from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom. 
We're on our social media apps. We're on the website. We're on, uh, we're on the Fox 12 Oregon app. And uh, coming up at about 1.30 p.m., we're going to have a representative from the Bureau of Land Management to talk about Bat Week. Yes, Bat Week. I didn't know it was Bat Week, but I do now, and you're going to find out all about it as well. It's actually really, really interesting. So that's coming up. We've got uh, Soraya from, all, from AEW Wrestling. Um, but if you're watching on our social media channel, what's going to happen now is we're going to log off, so we're just going to keep this video as its own. But this is a good opportunity to head on over to the website. Head over to the website, head to the Fox 12 Oregon app, get that in play because we have some other segments that you're only going to be able to see on there. And this is uh, kind of a new part of Fox 12 now, so that's what you're going to want to do. Facebook, YouTube, this video will end. We'll start again at 1.30. But in the meantime, join me over on the website and the app, and that's where we'll have some, some more things going on for you. So uh, I will see you then. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now. So again, if you're watching on the website, just stick with me here for a few.